I should take a little bit of a look at the middle piece, which is the sternum, and get some idea about whether or not it is actually in the midline of your body, or whether there's a deviation. So in this case, I place the pads of my middle fingers specifically. One of them near the top is into the little notch at the top of the body of the manubrium. That way, my index and my ring fingers can contact the area of the clavicle meeting the sternum, the sternoclavicular joint. When I double check the knee, I'm not only looking at it anatomically, but I find that, of course, that, yeah, usually there's kind of compensation in the knee, secondary to a foot and ankle issue. And I'm pushing up with my thumbs. And I look at this more as an energetic rebalancing of the knee rather than an anatomical, but they have to go together until I feel my breathing in the joint as being symmetrical, which I have right now. Um, what I'm going to do is demonstrate an examination that, that has evolved over the years. And when I was first in Kirksville and working with George Laughlin, he would do a sort of a screen on people. And he never seemed like he started treating people where you thought he should start, according to the chief complaint and the patient's history and things. And um, then when I took over Perrin Wilson's practice in Boston, Wilson used to say to me, if you have a 20-minute appointment, you're far better off spending 15 minutes getting, finding out where the key dysfunction is and giving a five-minute effective treatment rather than just using technique for 20 minutes and not getting much done. And then when I met Fred Mitchell Sr., and I want to see, does movement go smoothly down through that articular column over on the one I'm palpating? And I'm also, with these fingers, monitoring what's going on at the muscles of the other side. Are they reacting? Are they tightening up to guard things? Do they start to tighten up and then relax? Will things like that happen? That, bend your head forward, please. Way down. Stop is that as Paige moves her head forward in this direction, we have a tradition in osteopathic thinking to, well, we're thinking about this in terms of spinal mechanics. That's only a half truth. The real truth is that this forward bending from this point forward, turn your head, or excuse me, turn toward me, please. My fingers at this point Bring your head back up toward me, please. Oh, this works, this black white works out well. All right. The tight loose business from her neck. Take a deep breath in and out. And exhale. What I was checking there was to see if there was any kind of respiratory dyskinesis of the suboccipital muscles. Take a deep breath in and out. And exhale. And now I'm going to see if there's any swallowing dyskinesis. Take a deep breath in and out. Exhale and swallow. And no as asymmetric muscle firing there. And now clench your teeth together. Good. And relax. So none of those evoked any uh, muscular dyskinesis. Right shoulder forward gently. Very nice. Relax. Sit up a little bit. Right shoulder forward gently. Relax. Sit up for me. Right shoulder forward. This is an FRS. We treat it in extension. Let it go. Both shoulders forward gently and let it go. Good job. Hey, 
hand under the sacrum and related the movement of the sacrum to the lumbar area, moving out any lumbar, sacral lumbar or lumbosacral compression. And then moving up to release the diaphragm. Arm at all. And I strongly advise you to save yourself, never burn a calorie when you don't have to. To position a patient, learn to lift and roll. Don't lift them up. If I curled my fingers up, that would be appropriate for a sagittal plane where I'm not trying to induce rotation, but I don't want a flat hand. I want to have pressure only on the rib head on the right side. This is a little out loose here. <laughs> Good. That's another one. He's used his arms a lot. In your work? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. You can tell. I can tell. Mm-hmm. <laughs>